Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on the Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me. Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. On Saturday at the India Today conclave, Law Minister Kiran Rijiju said that there were some retired judges who were part of what he called an anti-India group. And then he ominously said they would have a price to pay. Now, the Law Minister did not identify the judges he had in mind, but most people can guess who precisely he was talking about. Joining me now to talk about the Law Minister's comments is a former judge of the Delhi High Court, Justice Rekha Sharma. Justice Sharma, on Saturday at the India Today conclave, the Law Minister Kiran Rijiju accused a few retired judges of being part of an anti-Indian gang and trying to make the judiciary play the role of an opposition party. His exact words were, and I'm quoting, a few of the retired judges, maybe three or four, are part of that anti-India group. These people are trying to make the Indian judiciary play the role of an opposition party. How do you respond to that comment by the law minister about retired judges? Mr. Thapar, I feel that it is most unfortunate that uh, such an expression of word has come from no less a person than the law minister of the country. I feel there is an unnecessary aggression in his words and they tantamount in my view to a threat and it is also in a way to an attempt to gag dissent. I feel I do not know who the judge is and in what context was he referring to them as anti-national. But if he is using such strong words against retired judges, he must come out with specifics. He just cannot. He just cannot use these words so loosely and say that retired judges are anti-national. If he is referring to, which I, I also looked into that uh, uh, conference which he was having in that India today in conclave, in that I find that uh, uh, he was referring to a seminar which was held in uh, uh, Delhi, uh, I think a week or 10 days ago, in which no less a person than the former Chief Justice of India, Yuju Lalit, was present. Justice A.P. Shah was present. Justice Madhun Lokkur, a eminent judge of the Supreme Court, was present. Then uh, Justice Deepak Gupta was present. And uh, there was a free exchange of uh, ideas with regard to the collegium system. And uh, I do not think any one of them had used any, anything which should have offended the law minister so much that he had um, had to say that they they fall in the gang of uh, anti-nationals. I mean, I who is anti-national? I mean, is he equating them with uh, Amrit Pal Singh? Amrit, Amrit Pal Singh is anti-national in today's time, in today's uh, newspapers. Are, are, and, and how can he, the law minister of the country, use this expression for uh, retired judges? I mean, I am shocked if you ask me correctly. 
let me give the audience a few details about the seminar that you referred to. I believe it was held roughly three weeks ago. It was organized by Prashant Bhushan's NGO. And you're absolutely right when you say that part of the audience included former Chief Justice UU Lalit, Justices A.P. Shah, Justices Madan Lukur, as well as Deepak Gupta. Now, at that seminar, a speech was delivered by Professor Mohan Gopal, who's one of India's leading legal scholars. And in that speech, Professor Gopal analyzed the 111 Supreme Court judges appointed since May 2004. And he said that his analysis showed that at least nine judges appointed by the UPA, that is to say by Mr. Modi and his government in the last nine years, were what he calls theocratic judges who go beyond the constitution to look for sources of law in Sanatan Dharma, in the Vedas, or ancient religious principles. And Professor Gopal added that he believes the UPA's intention is to pack the Supreme Court with theocratic judges who will interpret the constitution in terms of Hindu Rashtra and thus do away with India's secular republic. Clearly, this was the context within which the minister spoke, and this was troubling him and rankling with him. My question is simple. Does that context justify the minister calling retired judges who were simply present and listening anti-Indian? This is, this is uh, precisely my question also. How does he rein in... In fact, um, how does he rein in retired judges? I mean, I had, I, I was not part of that seminar, but I did hear those speeches later. And I did not find a single word which was offending as far as the judges are concerned. And for that matter, even I am nobody to uh, speak for uh, Mr. Mohan Gopal, but even he was only trying to analyze how the system has been working. But uh, let us confine ourselves to retired judges only. But not one one word had come from any of the judges who spoke in that seminar, which can, which can, at best, I don't think it was even uh, critical of the system. They were only trying to find out what are the shortcomings in the system and, and how well they can be improved upon. Some of them even uh, agreed that, um, uh, I mean, one of them probably agreed also that the system is working well. But there were others who felt that there are shortcomings in the system and which uh, must be taken care of. And they gave their suggestions. I mean, if, how we are, since we are confining our uh, discussion to retired judges, I feel that uh, the, the law minister must specify who are those judges he was referring to and what is so offending about them that he has uh, uh, felt uh, speaking like this. Now, in fact, in the India Today conclave on Saturday, the law minister went one step further. He didn't identify the judges he was referring to, but he said, and I'm quoting him, some people even go to court and say, please reign in the government. How can these people say openly that the Indian judiciary must head on take the government? I'm not aware of any retired judges who've gone to court and asked for the government to be reined in. So in this specific instance, do you think the minister has erred and actually got his facts wrong? Of course he has. Of course he has. It is for him to uh, tell the uh, people of India to who are those judges who according to him have uh, gone to the court and asked that the government should be reined in. Judges, of course, uh, uh, some of them, I am also one of them, that uh, have been writing about the system as a whole. And wherever they felt that uh, they, they should uh, speak their mind out, they have been speaking. But uh, in fact, it is uh, at time the law minister who had been indiscreet, I would say. If you recall, sometimes the last year in November, he was speaking on the collegium system. And he even questioned the Supreme Court. Uh, over this judgment on the National Judicial Accountability Commission. And uh, it, it's, it is his right. He has a, every right to have an opinion different from what the Supreme Court has said. The judgments of the Supreme Court are, uh, are available for criticism. But he doesn't stop there. He goes a step further and he says that um, uh, the government could have uh, taken steps, but it did not. But the fact that it has not does not mean that it will not. And that 
judges should see to it that they do not cross the Lakshman Rekha. Now, what is it? If the Supreme Court has given its judgment the, uh, on collegium, it is, uh, unless we have time and again, everybody has been saying that this is presently in vogue. Unless it is replaced by another better system or the parliament in its wisdom decides to overrule the judgment of the Supreme Court, then we will see how a better system comes into play. And even for that matter, if a, if a legislation or a constitutional amendment is brought about to change the present collegium system, then also it will have to go through the rigors of the uh, scrutiny of the Supreme Court. Absolutely. It can't be left at and I take it the point you're making, Justice Sharma, is that it is inappropriate for the law minister to be publicly saying of sitting serving judges that they must not cross the Lakshman Rekha. Judges are well aware that there is a Lakshman Rekha, but it is inappropriate for the law minister to be publicly issuing warnings of this kind to sitting serving judges. Isn't that the point you're making? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Let me tell you one more thing, uh, Mr. Thapar. You see, judges, uh, by the very nature of their functions, they are trained to measure their words. They are trained to measure their speeches. So they, when they speak, they know what they are speaking. They know where they are speaking. They know what they are speaking. And they know how they are speaking. So before any loose comment is passed against judges that they are anti-national, whether retired or sitting. Because till yesterday, you see the retired judges were also sitting judges. So a day later, they become uh, anti-national. So it, you see, it is, uh, it is, I would say, most unfair to be. Uh... In, in contrast to the point you make, which is well taken, the judges use their words in a measured fashion. They weigh them carefully before they speak. In contrast to that, I want to point out that there was something very ominous that sounded much like a threat delivered by the law minister on Saturday mm -hmm. at that India Today conclave. This was when he clearly said judges would have a price to pay. According to the Indian Express, his precise words were, and I'm quoting, agencies will take action as per the provisions of law. Nobody will escape. Those who have worked against the country will have a price to pay for that. How do you respond as a retired judge yourself to what sounds very much like a threat from the law minister? Well, uh, if you uh, see the speech as, as a whole, he started with the, uh, the opposition parties and then he talks of that conference and then he talks of retired judges and then he says that uh, they are uh, part of anti-national gang. And then he talks of Tukre Tukre gang. Now, you see Tukre Tukre gang, who is Tukre Tukre gang in their view, we do not know. Till date, we do not know what are they uh, talking when they refer to Tukre Tukre gang. But this is going far beyond when you tell the judges that, look, if you speak and what you speak, we do not know. You do not even tell us what they are speak, what they are offended by. We, you will have to meet the uh, consequences. I mean, uh, these are uh, uh, vague, very vague words. And uh, if the law minister really means it, he must come out with specifics. Am I right in saying? Am I right in saying this sounded like a threat? Of course, it is a threat. Of course, I take it as a threat. You know, one other important point. All the comments made about judges were presaged by the minister first saying, and I'm quoting him, this is a most important topic for me and the nation. That's how he presaged himself. Secondly, the minister's comments about retired judges were not a response to a question he'd been asked by the anchor. No such question about judges was asked of the minister. The minister said this of his own volition. Don't these two things together okay. indicate that this is not just a casual comment made carelessly off the cuff by the minister. This is a major concern that was weighing on his mind and he wanted to say this. He went out of his way to say it. Uh, it, uh, it was well thought out. It, uh, it was well thought out. There was no query about judges. 
there was no reference to the conference that he was alluding to. If, I, if he has some, uh, other than the conference, he has uh, some other statements of some judges, then he must come out with it. As far as that conference is concerned, because he mentioned in his, in his interaction, he mentioned only about that conference. And then he went on to say this, that judges are anti, retired judges are anti-national. Well, in that, I have already told you, I have, I, I had heard those speeches later, though I was not part of that conference at that time. And there is nothing, nothing at all in those speeches that should have invited these kinds of comments. But if he has something else in his mind, then he must speak out. So because am, from I that, right in, am I right in suggesting that if these comments by the minister were not prompted by the anchor, they weren't part of the discussion, he simply brought them up himself, that this is therefore perhaps part of a bigger agenda in the minister's mind, perhaps even in the government's mind. Otherwise, comments like this simply aren't made in public. No, no, I, I want to know one thing, uh, Mr. Thapar, what is the occasion? Why, why should uh, uh, the judges, retired judges should be reined in for no rhyme or reason? Have they no right to speak? Is it... Uh, uh, anti-national if you is, is it anti-national if you uh, say that the collegium system uh, as of now is the best system that we have is it anti-national if you say that the uh, enforcement agencies are uh, working selectively and that they should uh, uh, if they want to rein in people that should be across the board is it anti-national that if we say that uh, uh, the that people are only people of one community are being targeted, and uh, the others uh, even if they uh, speak in uh, hate languages, nothing, no action is taken against them. Is it anti-national? We are living in a uh, democratic country. We have every right to speak. Of course, we all know our limits. We know our limits. We have not used any derogatory words against anyone. Let, me, we are, let uh, me, before yes, I end, Justice Sharma, draw your attention to two other things the minister said at that India Today conclave. First, he said, and I'm quoting him, judges are not accountable. Courts have no rules, but practices which change from time to time. Do you accept judges are not accountable? No, judges, how judges are not accountable? Judges are liable to be impeached if they go wrong. What kind of accountability? Government judges are not government servants that um, uh, they have to be dismissed uh, at the will of the uh, state. The ju judges are uh, under the constitution, they can only be impeached. impeached. Let them be impeached if they have done so uh, wrong to the country that uh, they can no longer be continued as judges. In what, what kind of accountability does the minister expect from them? I, mean, I, I do not know. In fact, it's particularly worrying that he should even raise this question about the accountability of judges when he knows that they are accountable in the form of impeachment because it suggests that he's looking for some other accountability, perhaps enforced by him or the government. That's the suggestion, isn't it? But I don't think uh, uh, unless he decides or the government decides or the parliament decides to amend the constitution, and uh, then, of course, as I said earlier, it will have to be tested uh, in terms of the constitution and the independence of the judiciary. Because if you, uh, why why the, the provision for impeachment of judges is there? Because, uh, because to safeguard the independence of the judiciary, they can't be uh, removed some service just because uh, some judgment is unpalatable to uh, the uh, government in power. Now, there's a second uh, thing. There's a second claim the law minister made. Again, I'm going to quote him. He said, we, meaning the Modi government, we have never taken any action to undermine the Indian judiciary and we have not encroached upon the territory which is under the domain of the Indian judiciary. Do you accept that sweeping claim? Well, as I said earlier, nobody directly goes to a judge and tells him that uh, you are expected to do this or you are expected to do that. This is in the, uh, uh, in the form of a uh, veiled threat that I had just mentioned it to you that uh, don't uh, accede your uh, uh, Lakshman Rekhas. What does it mean? 
that uh, what does it mean it can it mean convey so many things you i i we, we i mean uh, no government ever would go uh, to the uh, to a judge and say that we want a particular uh, type of a decision but these are all uh, uh, circuitous way of telling the judges that this is what we want so who is accusing nobody has told the uh, minister that you have gone to uh, you have uh, tried to interfere uh, in the administration of justice nobody has gone to it is he himself who is saying that in other words by saying it is indicating you are suggesting a guilty conscience otherwise there was no need to say this hey nobody is saying I mean, if the opposition parties are saying that, but if that is up to them, they 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 uh, trade charges against each other. But who, which judge has said so? Nobody has said from the uh, judiciary. Nobody has said. Not even no retired judge, sitting judge, no question of saying such a thing. Finally, Justice Sharma, if you look back over the last few weeks, actually, to be honest, the last few months, it seems the government is locked in a battle with the judiciary. beyond calling retired judges anti indian and threatening that they have a price to pay which is what the law minister said on saturday mr rijiju over the last few weeks and months has been challenging the collegium he's been questioning its creation he's been questioning the way it functions and then separately the vice president has repeatedly challenged the basic structure doctrine how do you view this deliberate concerted attack on the judiciary from ministers from the vice president how do you view this what looks like a battle going on from one side mr thapar um, i i wrote uh, in one of my last to last article about uh, what the law minister has been saying and what the vice president of india has also been saying it uh, there also i had said that it is uh, unfortunate that uh, it is being said that uh, the government is uh, Uh, not accountable to anyone except to parliament I mean this is uh, turning the constitution upside down the government action gov nobody is saying the government's policies are accountable but government's action are accountable to uh, the judiciary and uh, uh, and in our democratic setup it is the judiciary which is supreme and in one in my article i also said that you see we have to all observe our dharma and what is that dharma that is the constitution of india and the parliament has to remain within its bounds the executive has to remain within its bounds and the judges have to perform their own duty in my last article which was published on 26 january i had said that i mean those i felt were very significant words which i used i said judges have to be not an echo but a voice we can't be singing the tune of the government we find something wrong with the uh, government actions they need to be set right so we can't be we are we, we have to be on our own we have to judge our their actions as per the values of the constitution as per the law laid down as per the terms of the principles of the constitution in fact can i pick up on something you said the constitution is the lakshman rekha within which the executive ministers and the legislature must function and what you're really saying is that the minister also should be aware there are lakshman rekhas that circumscribe him and in speaking the way he has he's given the clear impression of transgressing that lakshman rekha i am also saying lakshman rekha and i am also saying that constitution is the dharma which each each wing of the government and the judiciary have to follow and lakshman rekhas are defined in the constitution itself the role of the judiciary role of the parliament role of the executive they all have to remain within their bounds and if the law minister is talking in terms of uh, uh, saying that the judges uh, the uh, that the judiciary is uh, uh, is not functioning uh, as is required of it then certainly it is uh, it is crossing the that boundary and uh, and when you question the uh, very functioning of the collegium system when it has been decided by the judgment of the supreme court that this is the way the appointments of the judges of high court and the supreme court have to take place 
and yet questions are being raised as i said earlier also certainly everybody has every right to raise question but can't go beyond that they have to follow it as long as it is in existence change it if you don't like it but then be prepared for this also that if that change also comes to the court the court may still form an opinion which may be for or against the government just sir let me sum that up by putting it like this what you're saying to mr rajiju is remember minister there is a lakshman rekha that applies to you as well do not cross yes, there is a, uh, i am a, because the law minister is quite vocal often we hear from him some comment or the other so uh, i am reminded of a share from galib har ek baat pe kehte ho tum कि तू क्या है तुम ही कहो ये अंदाजे गुफ्तु क्या है दोज आर वेरी वेल चोजन वर्ड एंड अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल वे ऑफ सेंग इन उर्दू देर इज अ लक्ष्मण रेखा दैट अप्लाइज टू यू मिनिस्टर यू मस्ट स्ट्रिक्टली ऑब्जर्व इट आई थैंक यू जस्टिस शर्मा फॉर दिस इंटरव्यू टेक केयर हाई आई एम करण था Over the last few years I hope you've been watching my program the interview on the wire. During that period I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these as you know are tough times and if this program is going to remain bold, independent and sometimes even defiant then I think we need your support. At the end of the day it's a truism but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers so if you would like this program to remain the way it is forthright outspoken and interesting then would you consider supporting us all you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom but more than anything else i hope you will continue to watch the interview your viewership means an awful lot to me